Let's talk a little bit more about the JAX RPC scenario and some of the components. So the role of the Java API for XML remote procedure call is to generate and send messages embedded inside of HTTP and the HTTP protocol. So that's kind of the basic standard that we're dealing with. The idea here is that this JAX RPC standard is going to hide the SOAP specific details from our applications using this remote method invocation concepts here. So the component pieces that we're going to be dealing with are going to be generated components uh, that we are going to create using a whistle document that we're not actually going to have to program. So the end result of using JAX RPC is there's absolutely zero change to our Java implemented components. So regardless of which model we're using, the code, the business logic pieces remain exactly the same. So remote method invocation is a generic API. So it's not specifically a tie to any kind of a particular protocol, any type of particular format, any kind of particular messaging structure. And it's implemented inside of our application server containers to manage the delivery of the sub-message and the conversion of the sub-message into the specific format for the client side or for the uh, application deployed service. So it allows programmers to use SOAP in such a way that it, uh, it doesn't require us to make any modifications and changes to our code. So that's a very important consideration. So converting an existing Java component into a web service is very, very simple. The tools are going to handle all of that particular capability for us. The tools are going to create the JAX RPC components. So we're going to be talking about two different types of components here, one that exists on the client side and one that exists on the service side. The only drawback to this kind of implementation, it only supports a synchronous request response type of a messaging environment. So the work of JAX RPC is done by a couple of different types of generated classes. The description of these particular classes and the creation of them that comes directly from the WSDL files themselves. So we have two different pieces here that we're going to be looking at. One is called the stub class which is going to be generated for the client side. And the other is called the skeleton or the tie class. It's going to be generated for the server side where our actual service happens to be. So we're going to use this WSDL file to create these various pieces for us. So the WSDL file is going to be the description of the service. So that description of the service can be used to create these uh, stub and skeleton class components.